How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another weeknight edition of Full Side Cigar Reviews with Kirk. Again, it's been a couple months since I've checked in, so I wanted to say hi. I'm coming at you tonight with uh, what's become probably my go-to Robusto, and that is the Bolivar Royal Corona. Uh, Semi-box pressed, you know, 5 by 50 ish And, um, you know, like I said, this is probably the fullest body Cuban cigar I've had. I'm not a Cuban cigar connoisseur. I haven't had them all. I don't pretend to be an expert when it comes to Cuban cigars, or any cigars for that matter. But, uh, but I have had my share, and, uh, and this one is the fullest body. I really enjoy, uh, it's got like some good deep earth, uh, deep tobacco, like a little bit of cinnamon, like orange peel. Um, so it's nicely balanced. Uh, you know, a little bit of, little bit of spice, um, you know, kind of woody. Got a lot going on, good complexity. Um, good body. You know, I'm not really nicotine sensitive, but uh, I've noticed this one will sneak up on me sometimes. So if you're new to cigars, maybe make sure you have a full belly before you tackle this one. And I'm pairing it tonight with the uh, bottle I just picked up today. And this is the Angostura 1824, 12 year old. So as you can see, you know, I'm just uh, just getting acquainted with this bottle. So far I like it. It's not nearly as sweet as some of the rums I've had. You know, like the, uh, the Abuelo 12 is super sweet. Um, this is, this is uh, more akin to it's very bourbony to me, um, so I'm not sure if I love it because I'm not a huge bourbon fan. You know, I love Scotch whiskey and uh, like Canadian whiskey and I like Irish whiskey, but uh, I don't. You know, a lot of you, it's probably sacrilege to hear me say that, but it's it's just the truth. I'm just I'm not a huge bourbon fan. I mean, I'll drink bourbon if somebody offers me a nice bourbon. I'll I'll certainly drink it, and I have bourbon in my cabinet. Um, you know, and I like I like rye, but just for some reason, bourbon just doesn't appeal to me. as much anyway um but this i mean it, it smells so sweet and not that a rum needs to be sweet because it doesn't like uh, i like the uh florida Cana 18 year and that's not as sweet as um like the ron abuelo or what else do i like i like um the ron Kappa. it's not as not quite as sweet as the Ronza Cap, but certainly not as sweet as the XO. It's probably similar to the Solera 23. But this is this is altogether different. So I'll need to take some time and get to know this one. Maybe it'll open up. That happens too sometimes that you know when you because I just opened this bottle tonight. So sometimes takes a little while to uh, acclimate. But either way, I am enjoying it. And it's a beautiful evening to be sitting out here on the patio. It's about 70 degrees. It was kind of a cooler overcast day today in Tucson. And uh, let's see what's going on in my life. Again, you know, I guess I don't check in so much because there's just not a whole lot going on. Um, not too much, I think. I'm trying to plan a vacation trip this summer, thinking about California. Uh, i got a couple friends out there that i kind of like to see. And uh, my daughter has never seen the ocean, so my wife and I were kind of discussing that, you know, she loves sand. Everywhere we go, she, if there's sand, she wants to, you know, build a sand castle. Or, you know, she's got sand at school in her playground, and she just, uh, can you tell she's an Arizona kid? She likes to make uh, sand angels, is what she says, so... She's always got sand in her hair and her clothes and her shoes. So I think she would love the beach. Um, and if we do that, it's a secret. I trust you won't tell her, but if we do that, I'm sure we'll go to Disney for a day or two, and she's been asking about that. Um, but enough about my daughter. You probably don't care that much about my daughter. Uh, what's new with me? I've been trying to lose a little weight. Trying to, uh, you know, eat less. 
when we go for a walk every now and then. I, I do that every now and then. I kind of let myself let myself go, and then I lose weight, and I kind of have a whole routine where it starts with my diet, then I start to incorporate, you know, some walking and some jogging, and then I start lifting weights. Um, so, I, you know, I've dropped a few pounds, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. You know, I, when I start to gain weight, I don't, I don't feel very good. You know, I don't, I just feel, like, I don't sleep well. I feel uncomfortable all the time. You know, I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to shame anybody that's not what I mean at all but I, you know when I look around at some of the larger people I, I don't know how they do it because for me and I'm a tall guy you know I'm, I'm just under 6'8 and uh, once I crest like 270 275 I start feeling really uncomfortable um, all the time you know like in my clothes and like I said I don't sleep well I just kind of I just don't feel good you know like internally you know just I, I feel kind of nauseous I feel just kind of icky you know for lack of a better word and that's usually when you know one day I look in the mirror and I say all right Kirk it's time to uh time to reel it in and uh you know lucky for me you know I have kind of a background as an athlete and you know I, I've always, I, I had long periods of being a gym rat and, you know that really kind of ended when my daughter was born so I know you know, I know how to eat properly, and I know how to lose weight, and uh, and I've done it several times where, you know, I'll drop 30 pounds. Um, so luckily I know how to do it, and I can generally, you know, when I hit that time, I can get it under control. Um, it's tough though, man. It's, uh, basically what I have to do is cut sugar out of my diet, and then stop eating so much. <sighs> but this isn't Kirk's uh, poolside nutrition review, it's poolside cigar reviews. So let's try to think about anything cigar related going on. Um, you know, I'm still smoking cigars as always. Let's see, what, what have been my go-tos lately? You know, it's nice, I've had more time. I've actually been smoking more Churchills, which is interesting. You know, now that my daughter's a little older, she can swim. Um, so what I'll do, you know, obviously she always wants me to swim with her. She doesn't have any brothers or sisters to swim with. So I'll come out here, I'll put sunscreen on her, and I'll say, Daddy's going to smoke a cigar, you swim, and then when I'm done, I'll get in. Which is great, because she'll swim for, you know, an hour, hour and a half while I smoke a cigar, listen to music. And of course, you know, I watch her jump and spin and flip and all the stuff that she does. Um, but it gives me time to smoke larger cigars, which is a which is a pretty big change because you know really for the last five years I've been you know a petite Corona to robusto guy. You know very rarely would I grab a Toro, and I would never grab a Churchill. Um, but now I can smoke some of the larger Vitolas. And that's kind of fun, you know, it's just, it's different, it's, uh, it's nice to not be limited. You know, I just felt like every time I somehow acquired Churchills, it's like, well, these things are going to sit in my humidor for years, because I'll never have time to smoke them. And now I do, and I even see myself, uh, which is nice, and even though my daughter's not taking naps anymore, you know, because I can smoke while she's in the pool, I find myself, you know, smoking multiple cigars a day again, you know, on the weekends where I'll wake up and have one in the morning before the family wakes up, and then, you know, maybe one in the afternoon, one in the evening, which is great. You know, I love that. I made something. I'll show you that. I made this a few, a few months ago. Um, picked up, uh, picked up a table for like, where my wife bought it. It's like three or four dollars at a thrift store. So we sanded it and painted it, and I made it my cigar table for outside. I'll show it to you. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the table. It's actually in the daytime. I should show you a picture. But this is uh, this is about two years worth of cigar bands. So it's totally covered. I didn't miss any. Very cool. I'm uh, kind of proud of it. It took me longer than I thought it would. Reposition you guys.
But yeah, that took me uh, the better part of um, for about nine hours to put all those bands on there. Except for about two years ago, I started saving, you know, the cigar bands that didn't tear into shreds. If I had good whole cigar bands, I was uh, saving them and putting them in a big glass vase. And then uh, it got fairly full. I mean, it's paper, so you can really smash it down. But it got fairly full, and I thought, what can I do with this? And that was my idea. Well, I'll mod podge it onto a tabletop. We'll put it outside. I sprayed it with um, UV protectant lacquer. A lot of it. Um, so it is waterproof, and it's, it's hard, and it's slick, and it's supposed to be, you know, have some UV protection. But we'll see. I don't know. I, I'm kind of worried the Arizona sun is just going to bleach it out. If it happens, it happens. But, um... Uh, you know, it doesn't really do it justice at night to show you that during the day. It's really pretty. The table's actually maroon, and then the bands are, you know, all kinds of different colors with a lot of gold leaf like cigar bands have, which makes the, it's really nice, that gold and maroon. Anything else cigar related? I don't know. I, you know, I was planning on doing more of these videos. I actually I got an email from Flaviar. I don't know if you remember this, but a few years ago, I was reviewing some products from Flaviar. I actually have a link in the description below. I still think it's a good service. I haven't uh, really looked into it in a while, so I don't know what the prices are right now. But they've got a pretty well curated whiskey collection. I've actually purchased from them. Um, you know, they have sent me free stuff, but I've also bought bottles from them because they do have a nicely curated selection. And uh, Depending on what you're looking for, the prices for whole bottles, full bottles can be pretty good. And uh, if you're just getting into spirits, it's actually, you know, if the prices are comparable to what they were, it's actually a really nice service because they send you very good spirits uh, for a pretty reasonable price. You know, sample size, I think they come in two ounce bottles. And, you know, you know, minis, if you can find minis, of, you know, good scotch, good rum, good gin, because they, they, they've got a, a number of, you know, spirit lines, you know, uh, bourbons, and they, so they've got all kinds of spirits. But, you know, once you get into, like, the 50 plus dollar a bottle range, it's really hard to find minis. You know, you can find minis for Johnny Walker Black, but you're not really going to find many minis for, uh, <laughs> many minis, you're not going to find a lot of minis in, like, a Highland Park 12 year, even something really common and fairly... I don't want to say basic, it's one of my favorite scotches, but you're not going to find a lot of miniatures, you know, of those premium spirits. They just, they just don't bottle them. You know, only the really mega brands tend to do that. And if you can find, you know, a miniature of like Black of and 16, you're probably going to pay upwards of $15 for it, maybe more. Um, same thing if you're going to go to a bar, you know, if you're going to go to, you know, some, some bars have really nice whiskey selections, especially at resorts. I know the resorts around here have, have really great whiskey selections. The problem is you pay out the nose for it and you don't know how those bottles are stored. I mean, whiskey doesn't really go bad per se, but it does oxidize. And so if you go to, you know, grab a dram of, you know, Oban 14, that's half empty or, you know, only, maybe only has this much left in the bottle. It very well could have sat on that bar for years, and it could be oxidized and kind of flat. Um, so at least if you go to do Flaviar, you know, I, they take it straight from the bottle, and they make their pour their own miniatures. You know that it's not going to be oxidized. It's going to be, it's going to be in perfect condition for drinking, um, and the prices are reasonable. So again, check it out if you will. I think there's. Uh, a link in the description to all my videos. I just I left it there because uh, it felt like it's a pretty good service. At least it's it's worth a look. Hmm. You know it's funny. I, I do. I think this one, this cigar in particular, uh, is is making me uh, I don't say change my mind, but pique my curiosity more towards Cuban cigars because I was always a take it or leave it guy with Cuban cigars. And so, with this Royal Corona, it's got me thinking, 
Maybe there is something to them, I don't know. Or maybe it's just this particular cigar, but I know I almost, I almost asked a friend to pick me up some uh, Romeo and Julieta Short Churchill, so I haven't done it. Maybe next time they travel, I'll ask. I also still find myself smoking all over the map in terms of, you know, body and flavor profile. Yeah, I really see myself, uh, probably more often than I used to, reaching for milder cigars. And I really don't know why that is, because it's not like I'm smoking any less and maybe my pal's not used to it. I just, uh, I like that full spectrum. I guess it's the same reason why I can drink, you know, heavy IPAs or Imperial Stouts, but also enjoy, you know, uh, I can also enjoy Modelo. You know, it's just, it's nice to have a good range. You know, I, I, I like a salad, but I also like a porterhouse. Hmm. Very good. to think if anything else is going on. Not really. I'm going to try to check in with you more. Oh, what I see about Flaviar, though. Um, that's what, that's <laughs> the, the roundabout way I was getting to it. Um, someone emailed me from Flaviar about basically that they're still around, haven't heard from me in a while, and I said, you know, if you want to go ahead and send me out another sampler pack, I'd be happy to, uh, to discuss you in the videos again. And... Uh, they said they were. I don't know. Sometimes they do take a while. That's what was my only complaint with Flaviar is that sometimes their service is a little slow. Although maybe they've ironed that out because when I was promoting them a few years ago, they were still very new. And I remember I, uh, I got really annoyed one time that I, I ordered a Christmas present for my brother-in-law. I bought a, a tasting pack, just a single tasting pack that was five bottles of uh, different whiskeys and uh, five miniatures of different whiskeys and i thought i had ordered it in plenty of time i ordered it like mid-november trying to get it to him by christmas and he never got it and i was confused by that and then in like mid-january you know i reached out and they replied they you know they let me know that oh you were trying to get that shipped to pennsylvania and we can't ship to pennsylvania legally so we can't do that i was like well that's great thanks for letting me know and Thanks for not refunding me. Um, so I think what I ended up doing was, did I cancel the order? I either canceled the order or I just had it shipped here and then I mailed it. I don't remember what I did. But I was pretty annoyed by that. But I have bought from them on other occasions and to, to send here and it, no problem. So. If you have any experience with Flaviar, let me know. Because what I don't want to do is recommend something that's not good. Um, that's not what I'm about. Alright. I'll leave it at that tonight. So hopefully everybody's doing well. I don't even think I'm going to put my intro to start this video. So as always, if you stay till the end, I really do appreciate it. I know sometimes I ramble. Um, man, I just feel like I, I've just had nothing to say lately. So I, you know, I apologize. Maybe, maybe I'm just out of the out of the rhythm. Maybe if I just start making videos, I'll start having more things to talk about. In the past, I never had any problems I wanted to talk about, you know, cigar magazines, cigar catalogs, cigar reviewers, um, you know, obviously cigars. I was doing a lot more full reviews on cigars. Um, maybe that's where I should start. Maybe I should start doing some full reviews again. I don't know. Um, those just, those take a lot of time, you know, for me to review a cigar. It's probably, you know, whatever time it takes to smoke the cigar, plus an extra hour. Oh, AC kicked off, which is annoying. I'll take that as my cue to, uh, to say goodnight. So, everyone, until next time, thanks for hanging out, and uh, be sure you keep your feet in the pool, and drink in your hand, and a cigar in your mouth. Take care.